Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra. Thanks for joining me today. Today's episode is another Timber Tuesday where all of my projects are made with wood. How I like to cut boards is cut them in half first. So I'm just placing the board here on the blade where it looks like it's half and that's an eyeball all the time. I'm not a measuring person. But then I pull the clamp over, make sure that it's nice and straight all the way across and push it down. And that will give me the same measurement that I'm going to need for each of these boards. For safety, I always use this little pushing tool that came with my saw, but you can see this is slicing through the wood just like butter, and I love using these power tools. This Ryobi table saw is probably my favorite tool to use. I decided to cut these half pieces into thirds that would be big enough to do the window frame pieces. So I've adjusted my clamp measurement there and now I'm going to definitely use this pushing tool all the way through. Once I'm done the cut, I turn my saw off. Now we're back inside and the first thing I'm going to need to do is just remove all of these little metal parts from the frame that I don't need. So these little pieces that hold the board in, I'm not going to need that at all. So my needle nose pliers come in really handy for this. So I did make a mistake in cutting these pieces. I cut them a little bit too long. So I'm just going to use my little miter box and handsaw to make these cuts and have them fit into the window frame. I'm not going to be using my nailer for this. I'm going to use glue and I'm going to show you a brand new tool that I just received from Hoto. Hoto is a company that sells all of these really fun and unique tools. They are all charged with a USB charger and that just makes it so much more convenient for those of us who are using our smartphones and tablets and we've got all of these charger adapters. So why not use a drill that also charges this way? The tools have a really sleek design, as you can see, and everything is digital. It has the adjustments at the top for either drilling or using it as a screwdriver, and then the reverse and forward button, and this is where you charge it down at the bottom. In the case, it comes with some drill bits, so I'm going to try and get those out for you. I didn't realize that I needed to open the Velcro first. <laughs> that would have been really helpful. Anyhow, I'm going to take that out and show you the different types of drill bits that they have available, and then also the driver bits. And I'm going to use both of these for my project today, and I'll let you know how they work. And here is the power cord it is which is super convenient for me because that's what my smartphones and tablets use here you can see I've got it plugged in and it's charging and it shows you the battery indicator on the back the drill may look a little different but it works just like any other you go ahead and open and close the grip there I'm putting in a small drill bit because I'm going to need to drill through the size of my screws so I'm going to go ahead and push the button drill through this and then bring it back out again while it's still working. Really beautiful, smooth precision with this drill. I didn't have any issues using it. So what I'm going to do now is just remove the drill bit and put in the driver bit that I'm going to need. So you just open it up a little bit wider so it will fit the end of the driver bit and then tighten it up. Using the drill as a screwdriver was really nice. It went in super smooth and there's lots of torque. What it does is just adjust to the type of torque that it needs for your specific project. The other thing that I really enjoyed about this drill was that there wasn't a large battery pack hanging out at the bottom of the drill. This is going to allow me to get into some really tight spaces but still have the efficiency and the power of a regular drill with a big battery pack. 
I'm really pleased with the power and the quality of this product, and I'll definitely be using it in a lot of my projects in the future. Thanks so much to Hoto for sending me this drill. If you want to give this a try, go down to my description box, click on the link to their website, and use the code SN, all capital letters, for $10 off your first purchase. I had never heard of Hoto until I was contacted to find out if I wanted to try out their drill. Check out all of these absolutely fun tools. They come in different colors. This is the 12 volt brushless drill that I have, but they've got some screwdriver kits. They have a pressure washer and a tire inflator. They've also got some scales and measures. So they have a measuring tape and a smart kitchen scale, even a laser measure. And then they've also got a glue gun. Check out that glue gun. It is just so cool. Now that my box is complete, I'm going to give it one coat of latex paint. This is just regular house paint. I am not putting any chalk paint in it or anything. I just need one light coat. I want it to look really distressed. You've seen me do this B design before, but I'm just going to go over it quickly with you. This time, instead of just using the vinyl, because this wood is really rough and I was concerned that it wasn't going to stick long enough, I'm going to be using the vinyl as a stencil. So I'm just pressing it down and making sure that everything is nicely stuck on, because once I peel the transfer tape off, I really need all of those little pieces to stay on the wood. I'm going to use a kitchen sponge again, and this time I'm using black paint. I'm going to dab off the excess, make sure that I don't get any bleeding. And with vinyl, you usually don't get bleeding because it's stuck down. So I'm hoping that this is going to turn out exactly the way I want it. And it actually did. So I'm just going to be taking the black paint and dabbing it on. And if I need another coat, I'll just go ahead and go over it one more time. I'm going to take the vinyl off while the paint is still wet because I don't want to take any chances that the vinyl sticks to the paint and then I can't get it off later. I'm going to use my weeding tool just to pull off all the pieces in between. My bees looking pretty good there. And what I'm doing now on the sides is I've got another design cut out. And what I'm gonna do is just put this on just like a sticker. It doesn't have any pieces in between that need to stay on, so I don't need to use the transfer tape. So very easily, I can just pull the vinyl right off of the backing and being careful that I don't rip it, of course, and then just place it onto my wood. I'm going to use the same method, just the kitchen sponge and some black paint. And because this is a larger design, I can pounce a little bit harder to make sure that I get into all the cracks and crevices. But I don't want to fill it up completely because, of course, I want it to look rustic. And again, once I'm done, I'm just going to peel off the vinyl to reveal the image. I think this bee box turned out really sweet. I've got to do a couple more things to it before I can get it ready to take it to Finnegan's General Store this weekend. But I'm really pleased with how it turned out. If you are new to my channel and you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. For those of you who are coming back to see me over and over again, I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much. The second project I have for you today is recreating a farmhouse tray that I made a few videos ago. So I'm outside again and I'm working on cutting down some spindles. I'm cutting down some spindles and I'm using the first cut as the guide for the rest of the cuts. I'm going to need four of these little square wood blocks for each tray. I'm using my air nailer once more to attach the feet 
and I'm using two inch nails and this is just going to take the nail in about a half an inch into the tray. I'm doing three nails per foot and that just works out really well. I'm just checking here to make sure that I didn't go all the way through and it didn't. I got lucky with this one. I did try going from the top down but that was just a little bit more difficult because I really couldn't tell where the foot was when you're looking from the top down. So I decided to just go this way and I'm just double checking each time to make sure that my nail isn't going through. I'm back inside and I'm going to use some of this folk art home decor antique wax in the color brown and I'm going to use that to stain two of these trays. Three of them are going to be painted white but I already showed you that part in my previous video for the tray so I thought I would show you this way instead. I'm going with the grain of the wood and I'll just apply the wax until I get the depth of color that I want and just blend it in using the sponge. I'm using this large farmer's market stencil that I got at Joanne Crafts when I was there in Miami and I'm thinking we're looking at four or five years ago already. I'm going to use the same kitchen sponge and some white paint. This is just the same latex paint that I used to cover the window box. Now I did end up going a little heavy handed on this so I'm just picking up the stencil to check if there's some bleeding happening and yeah there is a little bit but you know what it's supposed to be rustic so I'm not going to worry about it. And who doesn't love a good reveal? So I thought I would share that with you because I really love being able to peel it back and look at what is left. I love it. For the second tray, I decided to switch out this stencil and I'm using this one that says Fresh Produce Locally Grown Organic. This is another stencil that came in the pack with the Farmer's Market from Joann's. Again, using my sponge and the white latex paint. This one had some larger letters, so it was a little easier to stencil and I didn't get as much bleeding. The handles that you see here are something that I thrifted a while ago. They came with the screws, so it'll be perfect. I'll be able to attach these to the trays. I'm just using some Rust-Oleum 2 times paint and primer in one in a flat black to spray paint the handles. I've marked where I need to drill my holes for the handles and I'm using the Hodo drill again. I did not have to charge it after I used it the last time, so it's holding its charge really well. You can see that I went up and down a few times. I just wanted to make sure that that hole was nice and clean. I like to flip the trays over and go through the backside of the hole with the drill as well, just to make sure that it's nice and clean too. Any little chips that come off, I'll just touch those up with some black paint. And as you can see, I painted the bottom of my tray and the feet with some black paint, and I'm just going to leave it that way. I really love how this tray turned out, and I hope you like it too. Before I go, I wanted to share this eBay store called True Treasures Forever. It's owned by my good friend Chris and his wife. Chris does a lot of thrifting and a lot of times him and I go out together and he looks for a lot of beautiful vintage china and figurines and collectibles. I would love it if you could go onto their eBay site and check out all of the wonderful items they have for sale. You're sure to find something that you just have to have. Just go onto Google and type in eBay True Treasures Forever and their store will pop up. Chris is the person who originally talked to the store owner where I'm going to be putting my things in and he's also going to be putting some of his vintage items in the store as well. So make sure you go check them out. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed my Timber Tuesday projects. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and stick around a while. Give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed on YouTube and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. 
Bye for now.